Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiskey Central. If you're new here, my name is Shayla, and today we're talking about Scotch whiskey regions and why they're super helpful when you're first getting into whiskey, and why they might be losing a bit of their significance for Scotch enthusiasts. As always, timestamps are in the description box below. There are five whiskey regions recognized by the Scotch whiskey regulations of 2009. There's Speyside, Highland, Lowland, Campbelltown, and Isla. And there's another region called Islands that aren't officially recognized that we'll talk about later. The regions began because of the popularity of blended whiskey. Blenders needed profiles for blending, and instead of having specific profiles for each distillery, it helped to have a few broad brush regions that had generalized profiles. They would blend these Speyside whiskeys together, the Highland whiskeys together, and then with those married blends, they would mix them together into a final blend that would hopefully be balanced and better than the sum of its parts. This was also super helpful when a certain whiskey wasn't available. They would just swap one Speyside with another Speyside and create a similar final product. Regional classification started with the Wash Act of 1784 that drew the Highland line between the Lowlands and the Highlands. The other regions gradually gained classification over the next century. There are many different names used for each region over the years, but the formal classification of Highland, Lowland, Speyside, Isla, and Campbelltown came in the 2009 Scotch Whiskey Regulations. Before we get into the specifics of each region, I just want to give a quick note on casks and production. One of the main things that will cause a difference in terms of flavor are the casks that were used. There are two main types of casks used in Scotch whiskey production. About 90% are ex-bourbon and about 10% are ex-sherry. There are some distilleries that will use only ex-bourbon or only ex-sherry, and a lot of them use a mixture of both. An important thing to consider is how the distillery chooses to produce the whiskey through fermentation and distillation. These are important factors in determining what the whiskey will taste like. But the regions are a helpful tool to give us generalized profiles without having to dig too deep into each distillery's production style. Now with all that being said, let's get into the specifics of each region. Alright, so let's start off with Speyside. Speyside is the most densely populated whiskey region in Scotland, with over 50 distilleries producing about half of Scotland's single malt whiskey. Which makes sense, there were good transportation networks even in the early distillation days, and the area has a large water supply that can support many distilleries. Speyside whiskey will typically not be peated, and will have notes like apple, pear, vanilla custard, honey, and spice, along with some that have nutty and dried fruit flavors. There's usually a good mix of ex-bourbon and ex-sherry in each whiskey, but there are some distilleries that fully mature their spirit in ex-sherry casks. Some notable brands from the Speyside region are Glenfiddich, Aberlour, Balvini, Glenfarclas, and Macallan. One note on Speyside whiskeys is that because they're technically located inside of the Highland region, there are a few distilleries that call themselves Highlands even though they're produced in Speyside. A couple of distilleries that do this are Glenfarclas and Macallan. The next region to cover is the Highlands. This is the largest whiskey producing region by landmass in Scotland and produces a wide range of flavors with over 40 distilleries if we include the islands. It can be helpful to break up this large region into smaller subregions of northern, southern, eastern, and western. The island subregion we'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Northern Highlands usually have a heavier texture. Some common notes are honey, vanilla, citrus, malt, fresh fruit, spice, and some saltiness. Some good examples of this would be Glenmorangie and Klein Leash. Eastern and Southern Highlands tend to be a little bit lighter in texture and have notes of malt, raisins, toffee, honey, heather, and dried fruit. Some examples of this would be Glendronic and Aberfeldy. Western Highlands can have a light peatiness and maritime influence. Common notes are orange, nutty, floral, honey, smoke, cooked fruit, spice, and toffee. Some examples of this would be Oban and Ben Nevis. All right, for the next region, we're heading down south to the Lowlands. This is the second largest whiskey producing region by landmass. This is a growing region with distilleries popping up all the time. There are over 10 distilleries operating in the region right now. Lowlands are generally unpeated and are known as soft and elegant malts that are sometimes floral. Some common notes that you might find on a Lowland whiskey are honey, cinnamon, citrus, ginger, and herbal and they're often called light. Some popular brands from the region include Akintoshin, Bladnock, and Glenkinchy, but there are quite a few lowlands that aren't as well known globally, like Annandale, Elsa Bay, Daff Mill, Kings Barnes, and Rosebank. The next region we're gonna cover is Isla. The small island off the west coast of Scotland near Campbelltown produces some of the most famous whiskey in the world, 
with nine distilleries in production, three to the south, three to the east, and three to the west. This whiskey region is known for creating heavily peated smoky whiskey. Some typical notes you might find on an isla are seaweed, brine, campfire smoke, iodine, smoked bacon, fish, dried fruits, and oil. Some of the most notable brands from the region are Lagavulin, Laphroaig, and Ardbeg. Many people understandably assume that all Isla whiskies are peated, but the island does produce some unpeated whiskies that still have that Isla character, like Brooklady the Classic Lottie and Bonahaben 12 Year. All right, now onto one of my favorite whiskey regions that unfortunately I do not have a bottle of, <laughs> Campbelltown. This is a small whiskey producing region that used to be known as the whiskey capital of the world. But after World War I, almost all of the distilleries in the region closed. And now they only have three active distilleries, Springbank, Glengyle, and Glen Scotia. Campbelltown whiskeys are full of flavor, sometimes said to have a Campbelltown funk, which I would describe as maybe like wet earth or kind of like, not like wet cardboard, I don't know, like wet earth is probably the best way to describe it. They're rich and robust with notes like brine, fresh and dried fruit, peat, vanilla, citrus, and toffee. The three brands from the region are Springbank, which produces Springbank, Longrow, and Hazelburn, Glengyle, which produces Kilcarran, and then you have Glen Scotia. The last region we're going to cover is the islands. They don't technically have their own officially recognized region, but they should in my opinion. So I'm going to cover them as their own separate thing from the highlands. There are hundreds of islands off the coast of Scotland, but only nine of them produce whiskey. I'm going to grab my iPad really quick because I know that I'm going to forget one. Give me a sec. Okay, we've got the trusty iPad now. Okay, so excluding Isla from the region, there's Aden, which has the La Crenza and Lag distilleries, Lewis, which has Avangadic, Harris, which has the Isle of Harris distillery, Mole, which has Tobermory distillery that also produces Lechick. We have Orkney, which has Highland Park and Scapa, Shetland, which has the Shetland Distilling Company, Sky, that has Talisker and Toraveg, Jura, which has Jura, and the and Rassi, which has the Isle of Rassi distillery. Whew! That I knew I knew I wouldn't remember them. I barely remembered them while I was doing the iPad. Okay, done with that part. Profiles vary from island to island, but generally you can find citrus, peaches and apricots, salt, ginger, black pepper, heather, and sometimes they're lightly peated. So are these whiskey regions still useful? Even going back to the 1880s, Alfred Bernard, the whiskey writer, noticed that Campbelltown and Lowland distilleries were making a Highland-style malt. There's a lot of innovation happening in the whiskey world, and more and more you're finding distilleries try to produce different styles for different palates. You have Elsa Bay, which produces four different types. I think it's lightly peated, heavily peated, oily, slash sulfury, and a Speyside style. Ben Riek and Speyside produces an unpeated and a peated version of their malt, the 10 and Smoky 10. And to think that distilleries like Mortlach and Craigalaki are bunched together with Glenlivet and Glenfiddich is kind of crazy. There's tons of variation in each region. You can find an ex-sherry, an ex-bourbon, a peated, and an unpeated in almost every region. So no matter what your preference is in terms of style, you'll probably find at least a couple distilleries in each region that will float your boat. I do still think that there's a validity in the regions in the sense that you have unpeated Islas like Brickladi and Bonahaben that still carry an Isla character that you can't get from the other regions. The islands have their own character, Campbelltown has a signature funk. <laughs> the Highland and Speysides might be able to kind of be interchanged depending on what whiskeys we're talking about, but in general I think Highlands are a little bit darker and Speysides are a little bit lighter. And then of course Lowland has its own light grassy floral kind of thing going on that I think is pretty recognizable. Of course, there are always exceptions to the rules, and with growing innovation, the list of exceptions is also growing. But that doesn't mean that the regions aren't still a valid way to describe the whiskeys that are produced in them. All right, that about does it for the Scotch whiskey regions. If I miss anything, please put it in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think they're valid? Do you think they're not valid? Give me all the details. Comment section down below. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this episode of Whiskey Central. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave it a like. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Ugh, oh, why is this so hard? That's what she said. That's good enough. That's definitely good enough. Okay, that needs to be done again, because that was terrible. Ugh.
and oh man, this is packed of information. I've been filming for I don't even know how long and we're not even to space side yet. Not even to space side. Like, holy bananas. One of the main things that will cause, before we get into, oh my god. <laughs> ah. Another important thing to consider is how a distillery chooses, damn it, not even to space side. And I have been filming for an hour. So whatever you're watching, the first little minute, the intro, history, and the talking about casks and production took me one hour to film. And it's probably only going to be like 30 seconds or maybe a minute. We'll see. <laughs> All right, not doing that again. Not doing it. Let's go to space side. <laughs> Damn it. Son of a bitch. There's only 87 more paragraphs to get through. Okay. Oh, honey. Damn it. Damn it. A lot of notes of damn it. Yeah. If we include the highlands. Oh my god. If we include the highlands. If we include the islands. God damn it. And by almost not, I mean we got two regions done, but it's fine. Okay. <sighs> Times are lightly peated. Okay. Son of a fucking bitch. I swear to fucking god right now I'm gonna lose my mind. And you knew everything that I was saying and you're just like, this is a stupid video, Shayla. I already know all of this. Please just put your opinion down below. Just... What do you think of the regions? Do you think they're hooey? Do you think they're not hooey? Do you think they're, I don't know. Those are the two options basically, so. I feel like a lot of people do this video, this like whiskey regions explained thing. I don't know, but I also feel like a lot of people review Highland Park 12. Like, it's kind of like at some point I have to do it and I feel like I internalize the information better if I make a video about it. Like, I can know something or I can know enough about something to make a video about it. Two di very different things, in my opinion. I-5 north, south side, vibe live, ride down these city blocks, and never will be stopped. They're trying to shut down the clubs that my city rocks. Now, Mr. Mayor, why would you enforce an ordinance? Music saves lives, cause kids out here are supporting it. Through the art form, we've learned the importance of the community. Truth to the youth, so they know what's up. Yup, as a public school student, I learned from my teachers, but became through my music. Take that away, that's vital. 14 fathoms deep, you do the math. Tribal. Carry the torch and what I do with that flame is lit every time that I step on the stage. The skyline is etched in my veins. You can never put that out, no matter how hard it rains. Northwest, man, making you feel the vibe. That is, every time I fly into Seattle, that is the song that I listen to. <laughs> When I go visit my mom, that's the song that just like, as the plane's coming down, I'm just like, yes.